Hey everyone, I'm Jay Cohen, and today we are cooking up with Vidalia onions and making a gorgeous spring pea and herb frittata. All we're going to need are our gorgeous Vidalia onions, some goat cheese, a bunch of herbs. You could use whatever you have on hand. Today I'm using mint, chives, and thyme. A lemon, we need that zest for some brightness. Spring peas, a cup and a quarter of these. I blanch them fresh. You could also use frozen. 100%, this is a completely customizable recipe to whatever you have in your fridge, and eight eggs. So we get started, I'm just going to slice up our Vidalia onions. The reason that I love them is because of their sweetness. Um, they're just the perfect onion to caramelize in my opinion. They're also a bit on the larger side and I am all about more onions. I think that like allium flavor is the number one kind of thing you need to start any dish. I'm going to thinly slice two onions, um, mainly because I want as much kind of like powerful, sweet, caramelized onion flavor in this frittata as possible. It's one of my favorite flavor profiles to play off like bright spring herbs and peas things like that, something that's a little bit more earthy and obviously like the sweetness from Vidalia onions are so amazing. On top of the fact that this is a spring frittata um, and spring is the season for Vidalia onions. This looks like a lot of onions, but it's gonna cook down, so might as well. And if you are someone who might be a little bit more sensitive to onion flavor, I'd still cook down two onions and then just pull some out to reserve for another use. I love to have kind of like a container of caramelized onions in the fridge at all times. I'm going to get a nonstick skillet over medium heat. I will heat up three tablespoons of olive oil. We are adding in our onions. And I'm just going to let this caramelize. It's gonna take a little bit of time. We wanna do this kind of low and slow, um, but I'm going to help the process out with a big old pinch of salt. What this is gonna do is help start to draw out the moisture from the onions so that can evaporate and this can cook down even faster. Meanwhile, let's get the rest of our frittata going. I'm going to crack in eight eggs into a bowl. This is kind of like my magic number. I don't think like there is a right or wrong answer because you can customize this depending on the size of your pan. Let's say you only have like an eight inch nonstick. You could probably do this with six eggs. If you only have like a, a some kind of jumbo 14 inch and you're really looking to meal prep for like your huge family of six, then yeah, go for a few more eggs. But I think that eight is kind of like the perfect frittata that will last me a few days in the fridge while still staying nice and fresh. I'm going to zest in two teaspoons of lemon zest. I think anything that has peas and mint or herbs just need lemon zest. Lemon zest just kind of brightens it up with that, without adding too much acidity. Sprinkle in a teaspoon of kosher salt. Again, my magic number in terms of seasoning, but you can reduce or add depending on your taste. And we'll do a half a teaspoon of freshly cracked black pepper. I'm gonna go for a splash of two tablespoons of milk. The milk just helps lighten things up, adds a little bit of fat for flavor. I think it just gives it a beautiful texture. And now we're just going to whisk until it is completely combined. You do not want to see any white. That's how you know you have properly whisked your eggs. Time to, to chop our herbs. You are looking for somewhere around a quarter cup of herbs in total. So I'm going to do half chives half mint with a teaspoon of thyme, just for a little bit extra. But you can customize this to whatever you have on hand. If you're lucky enough to have like a little backyard garden situation, you got some parsley, delicious, dill, love it. Even cilantro would be great. I love the combo of like parsley, scallions, cilantro, um, really anything fresh. Right now I'm going kind of that classic peas and mint flavor profile, but 
you can go to the beat of your own drum. You also don't have to use traditional herbs at all. You could use any greens you have on hand, whether that be spinach, um, if you had a lot of root vegetables like beets, you could use the beet greens and chop them up. I'm just giving a real rough chop to the mint. I don't want like super fine pieces. I want like nice little chunks. If you have woody herbs like thyme, rosemary, sage, feel free to add them in, but only add in at max like a teaspoon. These are just flavor profiles that are relatively um, powerful and we do not want this whole frittata to taste like, I don't know, the earth. <laughs> we want it to have a little bit of that kind of woodsy flavor, but we don't want it to completely overpower the peas and the goat cheese. And I'm gonna add this right into our egg mixture. Boop. Just give that a little whisk in, incorporate, and this is ready. And I bet you thought I was lying when I said they are going to cook down. Look how beautifully caramelized they are. This only took 20 to 25 minutes over medium heat. You get that gorgeous color and that jammy consistency. This is why I love using Fidelia onions for this frittata. So to this, I'm gonna add in our sweet peas, a cup and a quarter. So I'm merely just looking to warm them through before we add in our eggs. I'm gonna bump up the temperature to medium high heat just because we're about to add in our egg mixture and I wanna make sure it's set. Pour it in. So, thing about a frittata, how do you get it nice and perfect? I am going to first start by giving it a few swirls and what this is going to do is just make sure that everything is nice and incorporated. Right, peas all evenly distributed, the onions evenly distributed, the herbs, and then I am just going to let it go. Here's what we are looking for. I want to begin to see the edges set and get golden. Once that happens, which is only going to take about two to three minutes, we're going to stud it with goat cheese and finish it in the oven. Four ounces of goat cheese I think is absolutely perfect. Again, you can swap this out if you don't have goat cheese. You can use some grated parm, cheddar, gruyere, like really go wild. This is a like frittata that you can customize. You, if you don't have peas, you could use asparagus. You could use sauteed radishes, any leftover roasted root vegetables in your fridge. Sometimes I'll do this with sweet potatoes, kind of like give it quasi Spanish tortilla vibes. Um, this is kind of my favorite thing about frittatas that it can just be this vessel for leftovers. 450 oven. Pop this inside. See you soon. Okay, 10 minutes have passed and we have an absolutely perfect frittata. We are looking for the edges to pop up, get nice and rounded. The center is set. This is a gorgeous frittata. All right, I just topped it off with a little mint, some chopped chives, some extra lemon zest for flavor. And let's give this a slice. Look how beautiful. Look at that cross section, the peas, the goat cheese, the herbs, gorgeous. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. It's so light and bright. You get the sweetness from the Vidalia onions. They pair up so beautifully with the mint, the peas, the herbs, the lemon. This is all about spring produce right now. Down in Southern Georgia, Vidalia onions are like at peak ripeness. Same thing with these gorgeous peas I got with the herbs that are coming in. This is the time to make this frittata. If you want the recipe, you could head to thefeedfee.com. A huge thanks to Vidalia Onions for giving us such great product to work with, and I'll see you next time.